What's up guys, Jimmy Chang here with Andrew and we are in my garage filled with electric toys and we have a new electric toy to add to the collection. This is the Cabo Wolf Warrior XGT. That's the next version of the Cabo Wolf X line. We were the first to look at the scooter when it first came out. They've made some drastic improvements to make it even better and you know it's good when they keep adding on letters to the end of the name. <laughs> Andrew, tell us more about the scooter. It's supposed to be sine wave controllers, buttery smooth acceleration, and we're excited to check it out. So we're gonna get this bad boy open and see what changes they've made to the scooter. So it's supposed to be 80 pounds. That's half the reason why you buy this over the Wolf King. It's 20 pounds lighter and it's supposed to be a little bit more nimble and a little bit more portable, but still really not portable in my book. Let's grab this here. The struggle is real. So packaged nice and well. Four pieces of foam. Box came to us in very good condition. And one cool thing is they've switched the charge ports on here. The charger and the charge ports. So they've switched it to these M16 three pins. This should prevent any type of arcing and it makes it a lot easier to fit it into the charge port. Would we be able to use this? on the Cabo Mantis King GT. Exactly, they're both 60 volt scooters and it comes with two of them. It's a 28 amp hour battery. It's 3.5 amps together because they're 1.75 each. So it should take you eight hours to charge the scooter from empty to full. Look who we have here. What's up buddy, welcome. Thanks for joining us, keeping us safe. No grinding on those brake discs, oh, that's, that's a nice. plus. All right, so we have the light lighting tube around here and it's got this plastic wrapping. It's on pretty tight and it doesn't come off super easily. It's nice that it kept this tube from being damaged on shipping, but anyway, you get the point. <laughs> Not super easy taking this part off. The kickstand doesn't lock. And there's no resistance. Yeah, a little bit of movement and so a little bit of movement just goes. So in it, it's pretty simple. You just lift it up. The clamp will typically drop in. I like to have these in the front. And you just tighten them up and clamp them down. You want them snug though. If it's a little loose, you'll feel a little bit of stem movement in here. Okay, now that we have it all set up, let's do a walkthrough from top to bottom so we can see what the Wolf Warrior XGT is all about. First up is this beautiful color display. This is the best display we've ever seen on electric scooters. Easy to see, direct sunlight, works great at night and really simple to control. You just use this control module on the left side, go through the speed levels and you can adjust them as well. You have a USB port over here. These grips that don't twist on you, they're nice and snug. They also have this nice metal trim on here. Zoom hydraulic brakes, levers, the light module here and the turn signals. I do like that they didn't use a smoke out glass. That was just pretty terrible on the Wolf King GT. Hard to see during the daytime. And then you can kind of have them alternating too, so you can have like emergency lights on. Whoa, loud horn, that's pretty loud. And then you have the thumb throttle on the right. There's always that dead zone in there. So right here, there's no movement and then you'll see it start to go. That's always obnoxious. Moving down the steering pole, we have these bright headlights. This is what I love about the Wolf Warrior line. This is bright enough to blind a vampire at nighttime. So I love this thing. Here's the horn. Then you have 10 by three inch hybrid off-road tires. This is one of my favorite things about this scooter is it's very versatile. You can use this on off-roading and also on streets. And it's a really stable scooter at high speeds if it's similar to the previous version that we reviewed. Moving down the deck, you have this LED lights that you can control with a phone app. I changed this to solid blue, but you can do all sorts of different designs or all sorts of different colors. You have this same deck as previous. Didn't change anything on here. Moving to the rear seat. Milo's excited about this. He's the first person to put some footprints on this deck. So that's what we love about silicone decks is they're easy to clean, but they're super easy to get dirty. He just barely touched his feet on there and you can already see his paw prints on there. You're getting this dirty already, huh buddy? In the rear, another 10 by three inch hybrid off-road tire. These are zoom hydraulic brakes with the 140 millimeter brake disc and then a brake light in the rear too. I'm not a big fan of this kickstand. It looks amazing, but it just kind of falls easy. Oh, I guess it's better now that I tightened it. So if you're having to fall on you quite a bit, make sure to tighten this. That is better now, but still not amazing. It needs a little bit of a better action. And then here you have pseudo kick plates, kick bar with a little handle here that you can use to pick it up. Yeah, this is metal. And then this is like a rigid plastic around it. So 
metal center, rigid plastic around the edge. The main differences between this and the previous version is color display, thumb throttle, sine wave controllers, and charge ports. We're gonna gear up and take it for a test drive. Got the safety gear on and we're out riding the WWX GT. Now we're gonna go tell you guys what we love about it, what we hate about it, and who we think should get it. Initial impressions, how does this differ from the first version we tested? Oh, it's way better. The initial one, the rear suspension would always bottom out. It was really torquey. This is buttery smooth acceleration. I'm excited to really open this thing up. The one thing that is a knock on this scooter is 11 inch tires are a little bit more safe because there's some big old potholes there that you have to avoid with these 10 inch tires. So nothing wrong with the scooter, but just something you gotta be conscious of when you're with 10 inch tires. Okay, it is truly a beautiful day, and this is quite the beautiful scooter. Lots to love about this thing. Let's go over the things that we really like about it. Andrew? They really fixed this compared to the previous one we rode, because I love this scooter. It's nice and stable at high speeds. The color display is beautiful. It has plenty of power. Suspension is nice and stiff. Braking works really well. Sometimes I hate zoom brakes, but these brakes are really working well today. Overall aesthetics, what you get for it is super bright headlight, controllable LEDs. It just is a really great ride quality because of sine wave controllers. It's almost as if they took all the feedback from our prior video, which was pretty critical, and they fixed it. It's smooth, it doesn't bottom out. It's just a nice, fast, nimble ride. And that's what you get with this. I'd say this is equivalent to the Cabo Mantis King GT, but just with the dual stems here, the dual steering pulls for added stability if you really want to take this ripping off-road or if you just want that extra security of having two of these locking mechanisms to make you stable. If you're going to be doing a lot of street and night riding, you'll want to get this scooter over the Cabo Mantis King GT and the reason why is because of the horn. You can let cars know that you're on the road and also the bright lights. These lights are far superior to the Cabo Mantis King GT. The only reason why you'd get the Cabo Mantis King GT over the scooter is portability and also for off-roading capabilities. I do love being able to dial in the suspension on the Mantis King GT. At our next stop, we're gonna talk about the things that we don't like about the scooter. miles per hour on the display and I'm underneath 50% battery level. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty sure I could get this going probably 47, 48. How did it feel stability wise? Oh, really stable. That's what I love about dual forks. Really stable and stiff suspension helps out a lot too. All right, we're gonna test out the off-road and hill climbing abilities here on this hill. Pretty steep. I'm sure we'll come across steeper, but the camera can never really show how steep it, is, it really is. But uh, yeah, let's give it a go. How'd it feel? Had no issues at all. Ultimately, if you're looking for a hill eating machine, this will do it, but EUCs are the best for hills. <laughs> the Cabo Mantis King GT for off-roading. This thing's pretty stiff, so when you hit the bumps, it just tries to jar you off of the scooter. And um, I almost lost control coming down that hill. Just at the very end, almost bounced me off. When I went to go take that turn, it just kind of slid out on me. The Mantis is definitely a better off-roading beast. That's something we didn't take into consideration. The suspension is very stiff on this, which is great for going fast on roads. But uh, if you're going off-roading, it's nice to be able to adjust it and make it softer. And you can do that with the Cabo Mantis King GT, but you can't do that with this. No, can't do it with this one. Well, uh, let's keep riding and let's go find a place to talk about the things we don't like about the scooter. I've been trailing Andrew here on this gravel path. One thing I like, one thing I don't like. I do like the brake lights. So the brake lights aren't smoked out like they were before and they're easier to see. The thing that I don't like is the fender that, that it's on doesn't cover as much. It's, it's pretty high up, and so I'm getting sprayed with little rocks and with dust. I do like the scooter on this type of trail, like packed gravel. It's bumpy, but if you just keep the front end light and just kind of lift lightly over the little bumps, you just kind of cruise over everything and it's really fun. Not for heavy off-road usage, but light stuff like this trail, perfect. <laughs> 
Let's talk about the things that we don't like about the scooter. I hate that there's no memory on this display. I always want to keep it in speed level five and dual motors, but I got to reset that every time. This dead zone in the thumb throttle just bugs me. The full thing does take quite some time though, because you got to undo all four of these things, get it to fold, so that does become problematic. Yeah, so it's not a portable machine. Twice the time to fold this thing. It doesn't lock when folded, so it's gonna be a little unwieldy lifting up. I wish there was just some type of solution to keep this top end from swinging around when you fold it down. The um, kickstand, it looks really cool. It's just terrible. It needs a little bit more of a better spring action. I did tighten this bolt. That helped out a lot. I feel like it's got a good resistance now that you've tightened the bolt. It needs to lock into place. Right now, as it is, if you're on a little bit of an angle or if it gets pushed a little bit, that kickstand will just want to close up and fall on you. This is a little flimsy feeling and sounding. It feels brittle. Feels like that's gonna break as soon as it hits something, a curb, a rock, a, a branch or something. I'm not super confident about the water resistance on this guy because these little rubber gaskets have already pulled out Oh yeah. Normally we see silicone in there, but look at how, I mean. Yeah, that's that not really water, water resistant. In Water's gonna go in there. Yeah. And then the other one is just preference, the last one, and that is this deck. It's black, it's pretty, it's gorgeous when it's clean and it gets dirty pretty darn easily. Uh, the nice thing though, it is easy to clean. The suspension's great right now but the bushings on the Wolf Warriors always get blown out. How difficult is it to change out those bushings? Oh, it's pretty simple. You can buy upgraded bushings online and we'll post a link to them here on the video. They're really cheap, they're only like $15 and you can choose the infill based off of your weight and what type of suspension you want. Yeah, this is an excellent choice if you don't want to go too big with the Wolf King GT but want the added stability and don't want the Mantis. It's a solid, fast machine to be taken on the road. If you guys have any other questions, check out our full written review at gotscooter.com. Thanks for watching, and when you guys ride, wear your safety gear.